Hey everybody, I'm Brad Muir from Double Fine Productions. Uh, I'm a project lead here, and uh, we've been working on this game called Massive Chalice for about a year. Uh, we kickstarted it, and if you backed it, thanks so much. It's been super fun to work on. So yeah, we put together a demo for PAX Prime, and uh, if you can't make it to the show or the lines are too long, like I'm gonna walk you through it, and we'll talk about the features, um, and just kind of explain what the game's about. So let's just jump into the game. Okay, so here we are hanging out on the title screen. So this is actually like, um, this is a strategy layer. We'll get into this a little bit later. But um, the game is broken into two halves, a tactical layer and a strategy layer. So on the strategy layer, this is where you're, uh, you're defending this nation from this outside threat called the Cadence. You can see it sort of out here in the, the soup is what we refer to it on the, on the dev team. But um, yeah, the Cadence is a weird sort of mysterious force that's eating away at the edges of this nation from the outside in. And uh, you, you as the player, you take on the role of this immortal ruler that's gonna um, try to, try to usher them, uh, usher this nation through this battle that's gonna last hundreds of years. So yeah, we're gonna jump into the game. We start you out on the on the tactical layer because we really want to get you um, super like connected to these heroes that are fighting the battle for you. So you as a ruler, you're bound to this throne room, and so you, you can only really like direct these heroes remotely. Yeah, so you'll be controlling them on this tactical grid. Um, we use a system that uh, a lot of strategy games use, where your, your heroes, each of them, will have two action points. So you can see this, uh, these little icons above their health bar flags will tell you how many action points they have left. You can see if I move a character to, uh, to use two action points to move them, that's kind of like this outer border, and then the inner border is just one action point. Um, your special abilities are along the bottom. Um, and yeah, you can rotate the camera and move it around and just kind of see what's going on. Um, so there's one enemy that's in view right now. So this, this character here is uh, called a tantrum. So this is uh, um, all, of the, all of the Cadence enemies, they're, uh, they're all kind of based on uh, the effects of time. So this is actually a, an enemy that's based on uh, corrosion. So it explodes in this big uh, kind of explosion of like rust and, and goop and stuff. You can take a look at this guy. Um, yeah, he's called a, called a tantrum. Um, so on the hero side, uh, there are three main hero classes in the game. So this right here, this is a hunter. Um, the hunter fights with this big giant kind of like RPG crossbow. Um, we've got another character called an alchemist. So the alchemist uses this big kind of like flinger hook. Um, it, it's bladed and you can use it like a melee weapon, but primarily they're going to be throwing these explosive flasks uh, at enemies. Um, and then our third class is kind of like our heavy melee class called a caberjack. Um, the Caberjack fights with this big kind of like, so it's almost like a modern SWAT team style battering ram, but uh, this is like the weaponized medieval version of it. Um, and yeah, like I said, this is like the heavy melee class that you're going to be using to, to jump in there. Also, if you see these, uh, these, sig these sigils, that's what they call them, like each bloodline has its own sigil, and the heroes uh, from that bloodline will, will have those colors and sort of display this sigil. Um, these were all provided by backers, actually, which is really cool. So SS Cerritos was uh, submitted submitted to us as part of the game, um, and they used our tool to like design these these bloodlines, um, and that's cool. You can also see the traits of the hero. So we'll get into this a little bit later on the strategy side, but this is actually like a genetic code that um, that presents these different um, these different traits, and they can be passed on to the character's children. So we'll see that once we sort of get back to the. Um, for the strategy layer, but for here, um, they're also like very, um, very impactful on the on the tactics side. So like you know things like being hardy, like having uh, increased uh, maximum HP. Uh, Hawkeye like gives them uh, increased sight range, and then the Avenger like any time an ally dies, they'll actually get a huge buff for the rest of the fight. Um, all these things can help you out. Um, so I'm gonna take a couple of shots with the hunter at this guy. Um, they have this one ability called follow up. So uh, this is a standard shot with a, with a cooldown, and if it hits, they'll get a, another, get actually a second follow-up shot. There we go, okay, cool. So when, the, uh, when a tantrum explodes, it leaves behind this uh, kind of like big uh, patch of corrosion, uh, corruption on the ground, and if you stand in this, uh, if you end your turn while you're standing on this, you'll take damage at the beginning of your next turn. Okay, so here's another enemy that I've uncovered. This is a this is a new guy. This is actually called a uh, bulwark. This is a big um, 
decay enemy. So it's kind of like a big fossilized rock creature. Um, and this guy, when it takes damage, he'll actually grow this, um, this shell of bones that will protect it for the rest of the turn. Um, so those, it's kind of like an anti-alpha strike enemy. Like the first time you hit it each turn, it's gonna get like, like super, super armored. So you just need to be careful um, that you're not wasting too many attacks on it after it's kind of shelled up and you wanna wait for the next turn. Um, I also uncovered another guy over here. It's another one of them. You can see when the enemy takes his turn, you can see that um, this is kind of like our, our callback to the, uh, the strategy layer, like the having the cadence visible at the, at the edges. You see right there the bulwarks when they shoot, they have a, um, a piercing shot, so that actually went through two of my heroes uh, for a lot more damage. So you want to make sure when you're fighting them, you don't want to line your guys up like I did. You'd almost think I don't work on this game, <laughs> but I do, I promise. Um, so this, this other enemy here, this one, uh, this one is called a wrinkler. Let's see if I can get a shot of this guy. So yeah, this guy's called a wrinkler. Uh, he's another one of the of the decay family, kind of like fossilization, like he's got some like skeleton kind of parts and everything. So uh, it's a pretty standard melee enemy, but every time it hits you, um, it will actually age your character five years. So this is it's not super damaging on the tactics layer, but you know again, like we'll get into it, it, it hurts you um, in a very long term way. If you have heroes that you're planning on retiring. Um, it can really damage your, uh, your performance on the strategy layer. So you see this bulwark, he'll armor up now with his shell defense, and so any more hits, like if I run up and hit this guy again, um, it's only going to do one damage. So I just have to be really careful about, about um, stacking too many hits on top of each other in the same turn. You really want to spread out your damage against these guys. Um, let's see, so this Caberjack, Caberjack has a uh, knockback attack, which is kind of the primary crowd control um, in the game, like you want to use caber jacks, they're kind of like heavy melee fighters, but you can also use them. Um, you can also use them to stun enemies. So I'm going to do that in a minute. Um, but first of all, I want to get one of these alchemists up here and throw one of these exploding flasks because I can hit both of them right here. Okay, so now they're both going to armor up, but I can have the uh, caber jack come in next and smash them into each other. I'll knock the first one into the second one. And it'll, for sure, it's a guaranteed stun on the first character, but um, it might stun the second character as well. Okay, great. So they're both stunned, so that's gonna, they're gonna skip their turn. So I'll save, a, I'll save out a lot of damage that way. Um, let's see, with the hunter, I'm just gonna move the hunter up. So I'm not worried about these guys doing any more damage. And then here, um, I already used it once on another character. I don't know if you noticed this, but when you throw the flasks, these exploding flasks with the, um, uh, with the alchemists, they also have this additional skill. Uh, we call it free throw. I probably need to rename that one. But uh, yeah, with the free throw, you can actually throw a flask without wasting an action point. Usually, usually doing an attack will end your turn. But with the alchemists, you can actually do this, and this will uh, this allows you to either throw two flasks or uh, throw one and then run or uh, execute a melee attack. Um, I think I'm just going to throw another one to kill this wrinkler. little bit of damage from these guys up here. You see that uh, five years added to that guy's uh, uh, five years added to this guy here. Sorry, Rodolfo. Um, he's fine. He, he'll be fine. Let's see, I think I can finish this guy off here with my caber jack. So every time, uh, every time a character defeats uh, an enemy, there, there's a uh, battle cry that'll pop up right next to their HP flag, and that is actually, um, those were submitted by backers as well. So when you see this character say Vincera, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of Latin that was submitted. I learned that people really like Latin when it comes to uh, things like this. Is that even Latin? Now I'm asking the camera guy if, that's, if, it, if he knows that that's Latin. I don't. Let's see, and I think my, my last alchemist will be able to finish this guy off. 
Oh, and there's another bulwark over here. So the main objective on each of these tactical maps is just to go through and um, and, and defeat all of the cadence that are that are on the map. Um, let's see where this guy goes. Um, another great feature of the hunter, they have this uh, stealth ability where they can sneak around. Um, sneak around and, and kind of blend into the environment. And this is really good for scouting ahead. Um, so as I move everybody up, I'm probably gonna just end my turn here. I kind of know that the enemies are like are in this rough, uh, you know, this rough area of Fog of War. So I'm gonna move everybody else up and then have my hunter, uh, have my hunter move in. Sneak up here. Let's see if I can get a shot at it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So there's another tantrum, and then that bulwark that we uh, that we uncovered. So let's see if I can. Um, we do have these like these helpful indicators on the enemy flags. If you see their enemy uh, flags right here. As I'm moving around to a potential destination, it'll tell me uh, that eyeball will show up if I have line of sight to them. So when I'm moving this caber jack, I can move him somewhere where he won't have line of sight to those enemies, and he'll probably be safe. Um, on the turn. I'm gonna move, let's see. Let's move some of these other characters up as well, these alchemists. I'm being told off camera that Vencera is Italian for win. Seems cool. It's it's cool. I learn something new every day on the job. It's 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 cool. <laughs> I don't mind that. Every day's a school day, I guess. Oh, and this guy indeed was not safe. So that bulwark just kind of uh, wandered around because he couldn't see any any of my guys, and then ended up uh, smashing my caber jack. But they're fine. Okay, so that guy's gonna armor up. So we'll probably just ignore him for the rest of the turn. I'm gonna see if I can take out this this tantrum here. Uh, with my hunter. We use that follow-up shot so we can guarantee, hopefully. Okay. Okay, now there's one more bulwark in the back, so we'll see if we can get at least one of these potions on him. Okay, so that's right on the tip of the range there. I'm gonna take it anyway. spread my guys out a little bit. We're going to get this other alchemist over here. And then we'll move this one up over here. I think that this is the, this is the end of it, though, just these two guys. I armored up. I have another melee attack since I used that free throw. Um, I have another melee attack which will just do one damage because of his armor, and then the caber jack can hit him for one damage, and that should, that should take care of it. All right. um, the number of flasks are limited, so in a in a longer mission, you will definitely have to. Uh, Definitely have to worry about how many of those we have left. But um, in this in this demo, it's a, it's a little bit shorter, and we didn't tune down the uh, uh, the number of flasks that you get. So it's a little bit easier. You can kind of throw them with impunity. But it is something that you got to worry about in, in in the longer missions. Now, even though this is, isn't going to do a lot of damage, it's, this is the only enemy left. I'm just going to kind of rush it. I'm not sure if you saw that, but uh, this character has a uh, a couple of interesting traits. This lone wolf trait will uh, 
give them a big buff when there aren't any allies nearby. So this is really good actually on hunters because you can send them off by themselves and uh, they'll get a big buff when they're kind of like sneaking around um, and trying to ambush somebody. Um, you also see this guy, uh, Rodolfo, uh, he's got an asthma attack. So um, being asthmatic is actually a genetic trait. And after you do a double move, um, after you sprint like that, you'll um, get an asthma attack and then you won't be able to move as far on your next turn. It's pretty, it's kind of devastating. Uh, and there are a lot of people in the office that are, that are thumbs down on it. Um, but you just got want to, you know, these are the things you need to keep in, keep in mind when you're like retiring your heroes and you're marrying them together. Um, just like those genetic traits are gonna get passed down. Um, so sweet, so here's the end of the mission. This is the mission results screen. Um, here you can click any of your heroes and see them. So here's um, Mert McGirt. <laughs> Thanks backers. Um, so you see he leveled up during the mission. And so on the, on the skill tree, we can kind of uh, pick one of two options. So I'm gonna pick the acid solution, which put, um, uh, it puts a dot onto uh, the grenades and the, the melee weapon of the, of the alchemist. So that'll be useful in the next fight. Uh, and then I'm gonna proceed back to the strategy layer. So, so now, yeah, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. So this is the other half of the game where you're, um, you're managing the nation from this, uh, from, from this high, uh, like high up in the sky, sort of like top-down perspective. And you're gonna have the main. Uh, the main thing is that you're, you're you see these corruption numbers on each of these regions. So there's ten of them, um, five on the outside and then five on the inside. And uh, as I was talking about before, like the cadence kind of creeps in from the outside. And so these five outer regions are gonna start getting corrupted over time. Um, and then losing battles or skipping battles in those regions will actually also drastically increase the corruption. If the corruption gets up to 100%, you'll lose that region uh, completely. And any, any buildings that you've built there, like these keeps, like we'll get into this in a minute, um, they'll be lost and the bloodline will be lost and all the trainees. So it's really important that you do what you can um, to keep these corruption numbers as low as possible as you're going through the game. Um, so right now, like we have this keep, like just for demo purposes, we have this one ready to go. Um, normally you'll build these using the power of the chalice uh, through the research system. We'll see that in a minute. But um, right here, you can just click on uh, this empty keep, and we'll zoom down inside of it. And then you're presented with uh, the, you know, this empty throne and then the list of all of your heroes. So right now, it's uh, sorted by experience. So you can see Mert McGirt there, um, <laughs> up there. And we can kind of look at, look at him and see what he would look like uh, sitting on this throne. You know, um, we call this the regent. So whichever person I put um, into this keep will be the regent. And they're really the, it's their bloodline that I'm starting. Um, it's also one thing to, that, I, that I'd like to point out is that it's, um, it, it's gender agnostic. It doesn't matter. You can put a, a man or a woman onto the throne as the regent and they'll be um, in charge of their bloodline. Just because like, even though this is, it, it is a fantasy game and it, it does feel kind of medieval, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, just firstborn sons and only men in charge and all this stuff. It's like we get to write the rules and I, I think it's just a lot better for the game if we allow both like men and women to, um, to be equal in this, in this world that we're building. Um, so yeah, I can check out, it's really good to have high level characters um, as your regent and the, and the partner, marry them together, because the kids that they have, they're going to be training them every day of the simulation when we run the timeline. We'll see that a little bit later, like running the timeline um, and what that feels like. But yeah, these guys are sorted by, by their level. Um, we can also sort them by uh, their fertility. I think that, um, yeah, that I don't have any characters that have um, fertility bonuses. We have some people that are bountiful, some characters that get a random bountiful trait, and that's really useful because they'll have more, um, more children as time progresses. So, uh, you know, this Murray McGirt is, is my highest level hero. He's level four, and, um, and he's got pretty good stats. Um, this nervous stat is, is kind of a bummer, but he has decreased accuracy. Um, so he was probably the one that missed, uh, missed that grenade when I threw it back there, back there on the tactical layer. Um, so I got to think really, really hard about like, do I want to, you know, his kids might end up being nervous as well. So do I really want to do that? Also, this active tag right here, this just means that these were the characters that were in my active party. So there's Rodolfo there. Um, we saw him at the very end of the mission. So, you know, this is one of the key decision points in the game. Like, if I retire my... Uh, if I retire my highest level hero that I was using, I won't be able to use him in the next fight. Like he'll be here kind of managing this region and like having children uh, for the cause. And like those kids will grow up to be the next, uh, the heroes like in the next generation down the road. Um, so yeah, but I'm gonna do it because he's my highest level. And you know, the, that nervous thing isn't so bad.
So that's cool. We'll point him. And now I'm looking at, uh, you know, who am I going to marry to to Mert? Um, and I can just click here to see his uh, see his stats and his traits if I want to be reminded of it. But we can start seeing, you know, looking at these other other characters. So this was this is interesting. This is my um, this is sorted by compatibility. So you'll see um, the women up top. You can uh, you can marry. Um, you can have same-sex marriages in the game. You can marry men to men. We have a way, uh, or women to women. We have a way of adopting children in the game um, that comes a little bit later into the game. Um, and that way you can sort of create new children and give them to a couple. And that, that new child will like bind onto the, um, the couple and take on their, be a part of their bloodline and continue that legacy. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna click through a couple of these. I think the, that Anita Ochoa actually um, she's only level two, but it's actually really interesting is that she has this tranquil trait, which is increased accuracy. So those two might um, cancel each other out, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing that you look for, that, that people tend to look for when they're, when they're doing this, is again, like another high level hero. So I could sort it by level um, if I want to, like sort it by experience and see that like Debbie Walton is, um, you know, level three. So their children will be a lot higher level than uh, if not. Um, you can also look for, if we get back to compatibility, you can look for if, if you really want, like say you like characters that have a lot of HP that have this hardy trait, you, know, you can sort of look through your characters that have the hardy trait and then the children will be almost guaranteed to have that trait um, because both parents have that like genetic code, you know, they, they both have that gene, so it's so much more likely to be passed on to the, to the kids and it doesn't look like any of the women I have uh, actually have that hardy trait. So I think I'm just going to go with this Inidia Choa. Um, the only negative one that she has is this slow learner. Oh, and also she's cocky, <laughs> which means they have lowered evasion when they're at, when they're at like maximum HP. We're still tweaking a lot of these and putting traits in the game, but I think it's one of the one of the most compelling parts of the game. But yeah, I'm gonna marry these two together. Cool. Um, and this is the name of the keep again, uh, submitted by the backers. So whoever submitted Mert McGirt, uh, I, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce that. I bet it's another Italian word. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try it. Um, but yeah, and then this is the house motto, motto educate yourself. See, every day is a school day. There's, there's a total theme to this. Um, okay, so the next thing, uh, the next part of the, that the demo that walks you through is, is the research system. So here in the center of the map, there's, uh, this is the capital. This is where the actual massive chalice lives. And uh, once we get to it in the development process, um, the chalice is actually gonna speak to you. So if you can see the silhouette of a man and a woman have been kind of like trapped in this chalice, and these, this is your advisor, this character is your advisor, and it will um, give you a bunch of hints uh, at things, walk you through the tutorial, um, and we're going through like the VO casting right now and everything, and I, I think this is gonna be a really rad part of the game. Also make it feel a lot like a double fine game, just like having, um, uh, having a great script and like a lot of like witty dialogue and stuff that the two characters are talking about. But for now, we'll just look at the research. So um, there are like a lot of different options that we'll have in here. Um, some of them require a certain number of kills. So if we look at, uh, of specific cadence enemies, so if we look at this Age and Rage potion, so uh, the wrinklers that, that I was fighting earlier on the tactical thing, once I kill 15 of them, this will get unlocked and I'll be able to research it. Um, and this is a potion that will let you um, permanently age one of your heroes every time you use it, but give them a huge strength buff. So you can put this on one of your caber jacks and they can just like clean house for a few, for a few turns, but um, yeah, it's gonna age them five years, just like the Wrinkler. So there's a bit of like a Mega Man feel, is that you know, kind of taking the enemies, um, uh, taking the enemies' abilities and repurposing them into these like human weapons that you could use. Um, here's another one: the Bone Shell Armor for your Caber Jacks. So um, yeah, those Bulwark guys have that that shell that pops out. So this is a suit of armor that can be fashioned out of out of those um, Bulwarks, and you could equip it on your Caber Jacks, and then every time they get hit. They'll, they'll grow like that bone shell temporarily and shrug off all the damage that they take for the rest of the, the rest of the turn. It's really good for just sending one of them into a group of enemies and it's cool. So yeah, we, wanna, we want a lot of these things to feel like new upgrades and side grades and have a lot of interesting things. We also have um, some other like str strategic bonuses. So uh, like a fertility boost that would up the fertility of all of your heroes so that um, you'll just have, end up having more children. So a lot of these choices are gonna be, you know, just between new tactical technology and new strategic technology, and that's what you'll kind of be choosing from. So I'm gonna go with this bone shell armor um, and lock that in, um, and then back up, and we'll talk about the timeline. So you see the timeline along the top of the screen, and this is your primary way to interact with, uh, with the str strategy layer. 
And what you'll do is, um, you know, after you've kind of like set all your pieces in motion, like you've made all the decisions and you're like, okay, this is good. Like I've retired this. You can see House McGirt here, um, you know, over in uh, Ebbett Marsh in, this, in these marshlands, like that's cool. When I run the timeline, uh, they'll have a chance of having kids. You can also see over here on the, the upcoming events um, that that bone shell armor for our caber jacks, like that's gonna take 16 years for them to figure it out. Uh, and then up here on the timeline, every time something happens, you'll see individual um, events get kind of plopped down to that timeline. But really, it's like once you've made your decisions, it's like you can only really wait because the, the Cadence attacks are um, usually about 10 years apart. So it's really all you can do is like fire it up and just kind of let it go. You can see the days passing by and we, we actually simulate every day. Um, it's a really light simulation, but we simulate um, births and deaths and all, all the heroes are aging. Oh, and there you can see, okay, we ha they had a baby. So they had a baby, Robert. Um, let me cancel that. Oh, I can't actually jump in there because the cadence is attacked. I wanted to pause it and check it out. I might be able to just go into the capital real quick and see if we can see, here it is, Robert McGirt. So this is a baby that came out and it looks like he did get that hearty trait, um, which is great. Like, you know, he got that from his dad. And then we could even look at some of those other, um, we click the Regency tab, we can see some of the neatest things, see if there were any of those, uh, <laughs> those, those traits that, um, that he got from his mom. It looks like he actually didn't. Um, there is a bit of randomness and we have like mutations and some other random things that can happen with the kids. But um, you can see Robert is already age two. You can see his XP is like starting to grow. So every day of the simulation, he's actually being trained by his parents. So once he turns 15, he'll um, be transferred over to the capital. So he's sort of like living in that keep with his parents right now. Um, but then after he turns 15, he'll be transferred to the capital and then ready to uh, respond to one of these cadence attacks that's happening right now. So you can see these two regions that are being attacked. Um, they're both at 2% corruption. So by winning one of these battles, you'll reduce corruption in that area. It's one of our primary ways. It'll, there's, and then there are also like random rewards that you'll get for completing these battles. So um, because this one over here, they have the same uh, corruption percentage, but because this one is actually tied to, this is the outer, um, the outer marsh region, if that falls, then the cadence will start eating away at this inner marsh region where my keep is. So I'm going to choose to uh, go for that. And in the in the full game, like this is just the you know this is just basically the the gameplay loop. Like like you'll choose to respond to one of these attacks. You'll fly into the capital, and then you'll be able to choose your uh, heroes and deploy them into into the next tactical battle. But um, this is the end of the demo because we want to kind of get as many people through it as possible. Um, and yeah, we'll be showing more stuff. Like, like if you want to come come to our forums, you can go to doublefine.com slash forums. Um, you can also check out uh, our uh, our live streams on Twitch. We stream every couple of weeks, showing the full game, um, warts and all. So if you want to check that out, if you're interested in game development, um, we try to give a more like inside baseball look at like how we're putting it together and what it's like. Um, yeah, so that's at twitch uh, twitch.tv slash doublefine. And um, yeah, you can also become a slacker backer before we ship it. Um, and we've got some cool rewards still on our website. So that's massivechallis.com slash back. Uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for hanging out and watching, uh, watching the playthrough. If you have any questions, um, feel free to like put them on the forums. And uh, we're usually pretty good about getting back to people. And yeah, also, again, anyone who backed the Kickstarter, thanks for backing. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's awesome. And you've really let us make this cool game. So thanks.